Hey folks, we are back on the dev Twitch stream. My name is Nick Taylor. I'm a lead software engineer at Forum. Forum is the software that powers dev. You are distracted there, Nick. I'm Christina yeah, yeah. Gorton. I am the developer advocate at Forum for this week. Just want a heads up. This is my last week at Forum last, maybe not last time streaming, uh, may come back on with Nick at a different time, but it is uh, my last week here at Forum. Uh, but today we have a special guest with us. We have Jen Schiffer and Jen, tell us about yourself. What do you do? Who are you? <laughs> Who am I? That's what I came here to find out. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Jen Schiffer. I am the director of community at glitch.com, which we'll be talking about today. Um, I'm based in Jersey City, New Jersey in the United States. Um, and I've been from this area, New York, my entire life. Um, it is uh, about 35 degrees Fahrenheit here, which explains the chunky sweater. Um, and uh, I'm a big baby when it comes to temperature change. So that's an important thing, <laughs> an unimportant thing for everyone to know. Um, I, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so happy, happy winter, everyone who lives in a, a wintry climate. Um, yeah, so uh, I I you, I haven't streamed in a while, but I often do stream. Um, I'm Jen Schiffer, pretty much everywhere on uh, social media and on Glitch, uh, yeah. and yeah, and I'm happy to join. This is my first stream of the year, and I'm happy All it's right. with y'all because mm -hmm. uh, big fan of forum and uh, community working in that space. And so yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, no. yeah, thanks for saying hi and coming on awesome um so we got lots of stuff to talk about i mean we'll go on yeah. tangents like we always do but um you know uh so you're the director of community at glitch uh i wonder if you could just talk a bit about uh, for folk because for folks that might not be aware like what is glitch uh what do you do there as director of community and and we'll just kind of start there i guess yeah so glitch is a uh, web IDE used by a very creative community of coders. Um, so if you go to glitch.com, you can learn about all that and we'll get into it. Um, basically, our vision is to make the web something that everybody can build. And um, okay. there are so many tools out there. So the strategy for the vision is lowering the barrier to entry to building the web. And so okay. we do that through our web IDE, so the coding environment in the browser, it's very portable. Um, we also, the most important aspect of it is our community and the tools around building community and discovery. So um, a big part of not just working in the IDE for building mm -hmm. code is also remixing other apps that the community has created. So you never have to start from scratch and okay. it's a collaborative environment. Yeah, I, oh, that's cool, that. that's cool. I was I was telling Jen beforehand that um, I haven't used Glitch as much. I do love the community around Glitch, and I know a lot of people in it. Um, I used CodePin a lot when I first got started, and just that whole um, kind of premise of being able to get started coding kind of pretty easy um, is what I love about like Glitch or like CodePin and things like that. The nice thing about Glitch is like you can do a whole like app. <laughs> yeah. And I, I love the sense of like being able to remix. That's how I learned how to code was I would take people's pins on like code pin and, and just play around with them and break them and things. So I love this idea of being able to like learn from the community, remix what people have and um, go from there. So I think that's really great. Yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned CodePen. I'm a huge fan of CodePen. And personally, I see CodePen as kind of the blueprint for community driven uh, coding experiences and what Glitch had added to the table just about five years ago, Glitch launched, um, yeah. is the ability to do full stack apps in the yeah. browser. Um, so, you know, we kind of like brought view source of server side okay. files to the browser by giving you a full like app container to play around with. And our main focus is Node and JavaScript, but we see people doing other stuff on there. Um, but the vibe is very uh, similar in terms of vision um, with uh, CodePen. And I love the CodePen folks. 
uh, fr- friends with Chris and uh, yeah, shouts out yeah. to uh, all of them and all the other web IDEs. Like we're all just trying to like <laughs> lower the barrier for really cool, creative people to build the web coming from different backgrounds, not just like me, traditional computer science background, but you yeah. know, just kids who want to make games, you know? Yeah. 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 And I, I love how it just makes it approachable because like, I'm a little longer in the two. So like I, I learned HTML and JavaScript and notepad.exe on my probably pirated version of windows 2000 or something. But, uh, um, but yeah, it's just amazing. Like I know people always like to complain about things, but I, I'm like the amount of amazing products and tools that are out there these days is, is super awesome. And I, I just like that you can, like just get up and writing right away. You know I mean? You don't have to worry about like, oh, did I install all that stuff? Is this all here? You know, you can just say like, I want to create something. And uh, I think that's, that's super appealing. Yeah, I think like when people started, you know, the, the hardest part I think of building a website or building an app is actually getting it online so other people can use it um, and glitch does all that for you. We do the DevOps, mm-hmm. the deploy process and stuff like that. So you can go from having an, we say you go from having an idea to like a shareable app within yeah. seconds. And we have a lot of starters that you can remix it and go from so that you don't have to worry about like, where does this app exist? Where do I upload it to? And like, how do I get like a domain that I can then share? Those are the barriers yeah. that I think trip up a lot of people who are not full-time developers or traditional, mm-hmm. like conventional developers, I guess is a better phrase. Um, yeah. And so that's what I think is like extremely uh, powerful. Cause I mean, both of you, how many projects have you started and then like not finished? <laughs> Yeah, there, there, there's, a, there's a graveyard. There's a graveyard somewhere. Lots of dead body, dead products. Yeah. Yes, and that's why I love those kinds of sites. Like we were just talking about COVID or Glitch or you know Code Sandbox or any of those because it's nice to have like a quick win to keep being motivated to keep going and keep doing stuff. Because my my like for VS Code is just like a graveyard of projects. Whereas like my Code Pin or Code Sandbox or any of those, like I have all these things I can share and maybe they're not like uh, full stuff or they're, they're, they're ideas or something that I just like had and wanted to do real quick. And I can share those with people and it's fun and it is a great way to like build community and, and share with other people. And I think that's really great. Yeah. yeah I like, I, I have so many ideas and I like writing code and I like designing and I like, sharing with people and it's the like uh getting it deployed and stuff that's probably yeah. like my least favorite but i recognize that it is like really powerful so i i did have like a previous role where i was doing devops and i kind of was like okay i respect this like mad <laughs> respect for this also yeah, yeah. like not for me right now and so and then i landed at glitch and i was like cool i can like empower a bunch of people and build a community of people that like feel similarly and we have i mean we have all sorts of developers in the community we have full-time developers at all the big companies that everyone here uses Mm -hmm. the software of we have a lot of devrel people showing off examples of their company's apis on glitch um go to like web.dev and you'll see a lot of the examples that google posts are uh, embedded glitch apps Uh, and then we just have like people who have an idea and they're like let me play around see if i can get it going like single use sites like one that you know tracks uh you know how many well i i had a a community member make an app uh that tracks how many days since i was last rickrolled by the community so very simple (laughs) like how how many days days. since and then a number (laughs) yeah you know it's it's it, they're they're not keeping it up to date. I'll tell you that because it's been more than zero <laughs> days. But you know, it's a, it's a we're we're waiting. Uh, but yeah, there's just like some things where you have an idea and you're like, I want to immediately share it, and Google Docs is not it for that, or yeah. an email, or you know, what I mean, a, a PDF. It's like you want to build a web app, and we found a lot of people that started off with those very um, simple small sites, and then they're yeah. like, oh. I can do even more with this. And, yeah. you know, just being being working here since the beginning over the five years, I've seen teenagers who are now in 
their like early 20s working as full-time developers and i remember when they were just like trying out a frame school and and like playing around with like little shapes and now they're like building like augmented reality experiences in the in the browser and and not necessarily yeah. like just in glitch but in other tools it's like a great jump off um to yeah. uh other places and and the workforce where you use different tools so yeah, yeah it's cool to see yeah, that's super awesome to, to see people just, you know, progress like that. Um, I definitely want to keep talking about Glitch, uh, but you had mentioned, you know, like you're an artist yourself to some degree. I don't know in what capacity, but I, I've i been following you on. It always sounds weird that you say you follow somebody, but I've been following you on Twitter for a while. And I know you do a lot of uh, 8-bit pixel art. Uh, is that stuff you do on Glitch as well or is this elsewhere or is it? I know it's like a, something you really enjoy. Um, Oh yeah, I have about twenty different hobbies, uh, and a lot of them fall <laughs> into hobbier, yeah. yeah, yeah, just like I love making like crafts and like candles and like doing like makeup and uh, like taking photos and and I think a lot of them, a lot of stuff fall into uh, pixel art. I was really into drawing uh, pixel art. Uh, in a, an allegedly pirated copy of a, a drawing software. Uh, and I decided to make my own in-browser pixel art editor called make8bitart.com, um, which actually right now is, it has People been for a couple of years. People use that on the code pin, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a glitch app. Um, nice. So like, cool. yeah, so if you go to make8bitart.com, that is a yeah, custom man. domain I set up for an app on Glitch, that's at okay. makeapitart.glitch.me. Um, you can set up custom domains on your Glitch apps, um, which okay, is- Okay, yeah, I was gonna uh, ask that, cool. yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, so I so I do my development on there now. Um, okay. And yeah, like a couple thousand people every day go to Make Ape Art and just like make pixel art. And so I sometimes, I, I often paint with watercolor pixel art and I'll like start okay. off and make 8-bit art. And I've made like a whole bunch of different apps related to images and HTML canvas and experiments mm -hmm. with pixels and how to represent pixels. And there are all these like little glitch apps that I have a playlist of, um, okay. which is like the glitch way of collecting and bookmarking apps. Um, and I was kind of doing that before I joined um, Glitch, which was Fog Creek at the time. Um, yeah. And that work, surprisingly, I thought it would slow down when I joined the company because it was like early on and my job is to build a community. Um, but because Glitch made it so easy to put together these experiments, um, mm -hmm. let alone share and embed them, it like that work increased from my first year at Glitch. And so, um, in fact, yesterday, uh, my friend Brian Cardell gave like a talk about HTML and Canvas and like a historical look at it. And he used a lot of my work as examples. And these are Glitch apps that I probably haven't looked at in a couple of years. And I'm like, oh, okay. they're there and they work and people are finding them. <laughs> and I'm like, cool, we're doing our job. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but that, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, I just love taking things, like taking tangible things, digitizing them, making them more abstract in like pixel form mm -hmm. and then putting them back into a tangible space. So that's kind of like my artist statement for like why I uh, painstakingly watercolor paint pixel art okay. onto paper. <laughs> So cool, cool. you asked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. It's I, I find it super art, interesting. So I know this like painstaking, like people being like, why are you doing this? Because, because I can, why not? Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. fun. It's therapeutic. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's a non screen way to break stuff down into smaller problems and being yeah. uh, an engineer. Um, that's just kind of like in our muscle memory, if not also yeah. like our blood. So yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Now I just do and... embroidery. <laughs> <laughs> embroidery, <laughs> embroidery and like cross stitch and like knitting and crocheting and all the like the textile crafts and stuff too um, are very similar to pixel art. And also they kind of create those crafts created the foundation for computing today with like punch cards and stuff like yeah. that. So yeah. Uh, yeah, what female female crafters were the blueprint for um, 
all the things that we're building on software with software yeah. today. So read a crochet or a knitting like pattern, then you're pretty good. You're pretty set to to do programming languages too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, crocheting is crocheting when I was uh, a teenager was what really like, you know, I, I have ADHD and, and focusing is um, not one of my strengths, but it's one of my fun quirks and uh, crocheting and seeing what happens if you do not follow directions yeah. Um, yeah. is uh, what really kind of clicked for me in the like, okay, this is a situation where I really do have to follow direction or else everything could go to shit. Yeah. Um, another, another, that's like another thing that we, we've thought about when working on glitch is, um, one of the other barriers to getting excited and becoming, um, more participatory in building the web is the fear of breaking stuff, um, and feeling like kind of alone. There's a big gap in references for code between beginner and expert, there's like an intermediate gap um, and people are afraid to break things. They're afraid to be like made fun of for breaking things. And so every glitch app has, um, it's basically a Git repo. Um, and we have a okay. feature called rewind. So you can just rewind the app if you like mess up and don't know how to like undo it or whatever. Um, okay. And so we encourage people like remix and break stuff. And if you break it, you can just like rewind it or you can like start again and the the world think, hasn't like fallen down. I think that's a super cool concept because well, I mean, I guess if people don't know what cassettes are, but you still know what how to rewind on even on streaming. But I, I, that's that's a great way to convey you know going back and get history because you like messed something up you know so it's like and it removes the complexity because I know Git, Git can be intimidating for a lot of people and especially folks that are just starting too you know like because i've worked with a lot of people who are either in boot camps or, or like just you know pairing with some people and you know it, it kind of ties into like what glitch is doing but like you know they have a react project they just need to do the project you know but then they're like completely overwhelmed with oh i gotta create a git repo i've got to initialize npm i've got to do this this and then it's like and i still haven't done anything yet so it's i think that's great uh, I, I love that idea of the rewind feature yeah, um, I, I'm i pretty cool under pressure, but my body has a physical response to frustration that involves my eyes welling up with tears. Um, Me too. I think it, yeah, yeah, like, it's just like, I'm like, I'm not sad and like, I'm not at my breaking point, but like, I'm crying yeah. and like, get like getting stuck in like, get hell uh, yeah. is a big trigger for that. <laughs> So, and I'm, you know, I'm not new uh, to development by any means. That no. means all sorts of version control stuff. A version control yeah. is like uh, the, the 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 trickiest and can be the most frustrating because it's not visual. And I'm a visual person. Yeah. Rewind is like a visual, uh, you know, toggle yeah. to go back in in time. So it, I, I also think that glitch rewind could be a helpful tool if you have a hard time conceptualizing like what Git mm -hmm. is actually doing um, yeah. Yeah. behind the scenes. Um, and, you know, Glitch is a collaborative editor, so you can have multiple people coding and stuff like that. And Rewind will mm -hmm. show you like who edited what and what files were edited and you can kind of like go back. Um, okay. So if you if you invite someone to your project, cause like, hey, I'll help you. And mm -hmm. they're not being very nice and they mess around <laughs> with stuff, you can, remove them from the project and then rewind okay. back to the state before it and just pretend it never happened. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the ultimate, uh, insult. I'm sorry. I'm rewinding you. Um, I just want to take a moment <laughs> to say that I'm glad I found another fellow frustrator tears, uh, tear frustration, because that is yeah. <laughs> something been going on my whole life that I'm like, I constantly have to tell people I'm not upset. I promise I'm not upset. My eyes just do this. <laughs> I mean, everything, I mean, this is unrelated to tech, but like, I think, um, especially, um, the, the, the gender we carry in this industry, 
Um, there are stereotypes that go along with it, and physical responses to valid frustration are valid in themselves, and they're not actually blockers to moving forward. Our body does all sorts of things yeah. to help get us through adversity, like we sweat, you know, to cool off. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I understand the kind of like, oh, they're like upset something's going on. That's why I always am very transparent of like, if you see me like tearing up, like I'm probably just like at a wall and like you know ready to and that's why also like learning to ask for help early on uh is like so important it's something i'm always yeah. working on even in my 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 yeah. old age of 80 years old so <laughs> yeah yeah no it, it, it's it's super important to to ask for help you know like as you, as you gain more experience for sure your questions might be different and stuff but it's still to, like i would 100 percent tell anybody to just you're stuck on something after you're doing the best of your abilities, like to try and figure something out. Don't hesitate and ask somebody, you know, um, uh, I'm going to rewind pun intended, but you'd, <laughs> you'd mentioned, um, uh, glitch was part of a company called fog Creek or, or like maybe talk about the history there. And it, it's funny parallel. We talked about this briefly before the stream, but, uh, at one startup I was at, I was using fog bugs, which was uh, bug tracking software that fog Creek made. So I, I was actually, uh, surprised. Uh, is that your UPC or is it? That was my, that was my, uh, my visual timer, which is actually what I use to, when I hit like a bug or something and I'm like, I'll okay. give myself 10 minutes to try to work on it. And when the timer goes off, it gets me like out of the zone to be like, okay, I've been heads down okay. on this. Like, but like I moved it. So of course it's yelling at me. It's a sentient uh, being. Uh, it's, it's, all good. Um, it's all good. But yeah, fo fog bugs, fog Creek. Um, so I joined fo the company fog Creek. Um, it'll be five years in less than a month, um, okay. which is like a Congrats. million years in tech job yeah. time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so I joined Fog Creek to work on a project that was about to like be um, kind of refresh and launch called Glitch. Um, it was mm -hmm. GoMix when I started and it had a previous name HyperDev. It was always like an in-browser ID in the works, but we wanted to relaunch it as Glitch um, and really make it community focused, um, which okay. is seems very like. Um, table stakes now but like five years ago mm -hmm. things were very very different yeah. Yeah. um yeah. in many in many ways things were very different five years ago um yeah. and so i joined to lead uh the community efforts, my title is community engineer, and we had a small team of folks that were working on this kind of R&D project while we had the company also working on fog bugs and, and some other stuff. And, uh, you okay. know, a couple of years, and also like Fog Creek, uh, like they co-created Stack Overflow and they created Trello, which are their own companies. You probably heard of them. Yeah. Shouts out to all my friends at those companies too. Um, and yeah, we, Glitch, be Fog Creek officially became Glitch um, okay. I believe it was 2018. I joined 2017. Um, and we, you know, had our own office, we became our own company, um, we renamed the company to Glitch. Um, okay. And that's where we've been at um, for the past uh, few years. Uh, so okay. there is a it there's a it's, it's, it, it will become I think it will become a, a, a trend again soon, but like, it's not often that you see like a company family tree. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think we'll see more of that as like company, like non big companies are acquiring other companies and stuff. Um, in our case, we didn't like acquire, we like branched off. We like cultivated, I think is, would be the, the phrase. And so Fog yeah. Creek, like the whole, the whole the Fog Creek cinematic universe, um, <laughs> It's about like 21, 22 years old. So, um, yeah, that's a that's a long time. Um, the company yeah. can essentially drink and also at a higher premium rent a car. So, <laughs> congrats, Fog Creek. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Um, the, the other thing I was gonna say this this is not uh, anything technical about Glitch, but I love the aesthetic of Glitch. And I'm super curious. Uh, I also like Swedish fish, and I'm assuming that's what the logo is. Is that what they are? Or, or I'm curious, like how that logo came about. Yeah, the the logo are um, uh, there's an emoji of a carp flag 
two carp flag fishes, um, coin boy, uh, they're called. Okay. And, uh, yeah, when we were relaunching glitch, um, the directive was like, you know, let's make it easy for people to share what they're doing. And, uh, you know, instead of having to say glitch or whatever, like, let's like yeah. have people share an emoji or something like that. Um, okay. I think at the time, you know, Snapchat, which had like the ghost logo, like, Mm-hmm. It was like synonymous with the ghost emoji or whatever. So kind of like that vibe. Um, when we okay. took that, it's it's just like a, there's a lot of, there can be many like sort of meanings uh, to it when you first look at it. So, you know, you like Swedish fish. And I think the whole <laughs> idea is to create this vibe that is just extremely unpretentious um, okay. because development, web development, um, can be an extremely intimidating and pretentious space to not only enter, but stay in. Um, and yeah. I think uh, that that culture kind of per- is pervasive through a lot of the tooling um, mm-hmm. people use. Um, I mean, I come from an academic background and writing a lot of Java um, and Java. Okay. I know a lot of people bristle at the, like the word Java because they had to either learn it at the school or it's like unknown to them. Um, but Java, um, what is good about it and it's popular rose is because the tooling was so great, yeah. but it was so boring. Um, and to stare at something like that all day as a visual person and just pe- someone who likes art and just like is not looking to yeah. stare at a boring enterprise screen all day um yeah yeah it's that's you know that's i think it's like kind of the vibe we're going for with the logo and also just like the look and of the site and the editor and you know in the beginning there are like you know folks not too often anymore because i think with other really cool other unpretentious apps like figma and um let's see like webflow there's just like a lot of bunch of apps that we're seeing more uh cuteness built into uh, yeah, yeah. design and, and and look at and like having that unpretentious adorable look to it um is not a like bad thing anymore um yeah. i think designers have such often had such cool looking uh tools and it's like yeah. developers should have that too and you know so yeah and it's in the browser so you know we have people who don't like you know, they're like, oh, this is like too cutesy, like the editor or something like that. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's in the browser. So we have people who make extensions or or use Tamper Monkey to like run scripts and customize uh, or to make it look the way that they want to look. But we're going for like the larger part of our community, like loves that vibe. And we get overwhelmingly good feedback about it, which is why we cater to that um, versus like having like a separate like, People said, like, oh, are you going to launch, like, a professional version? I'm like, it is professional. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> this is the pro version, people. <laughs> and I, and I don't want to get into the whole, like, you know, patriarchy thing and how that, like, frames our thinking of how things should look and, and, and what we develop with. But it definitely has, like, yeah. a play in there. And we're not we're not playing that game. So, yeah. Yeah. And you, you said something important, which in it, you know, this isn't just glitch, but there's, like the rise of the in-browser IDEs. And I I think this is like super exciting because like not everybody is running like an M1 MacBook in their house. So, you know, just being able to log on to a browser, uh, you know, and just get to work. I think that's super empowering. So it's, it's, I think it's, it's definitely a smart move that this is all in browser, like, like, like a lot of other tools. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's why, I mean, it's, it, it's not trivial to build an in browser editor that gives you containers. So you get full stack apps and, and all that, that part's not trivial, but like the editor in the browser thing, um, is way more easier to do today than it's ever been, which is why we're seeing so much of it. So there's a, there's a lot of in browser editors, um, that might be like, catered to more niche like frameworks um, or different kind of disciplines within the tech space. Mm -hmm. Um, I think one thing that sets Glitch apart besides 
how how long we've been around and our aesthetic um, is like the community that we and the community itself cultivated over the past uh, several years. I mean, that's also kind of like the success of Code Pen. They've cultivated yeah. a really excellent creative community of people showing off really like beautiful, you know, things that they're they're making. And I think that's whenever people say like, why would I use this instead of that? You know, I'm kind of I'm often like. I don't know why you would use that. Like, what are you trying to do? <laughs> what are you looking for in it? Yeah. You know, if you're just looking for something to type code into, well, you know, you could use a lot of things, but if you're looking to like not start from scratch or you want to explore or you're looking for inspiration um, mm -hmm. or you want to make a full stack app in the browser that you're not locked into the service, there's no special sauce that we do, you know, yeah. you can export your apps to GitHub or download it and run it on any node server. Um, mm -hmm. If you're just kind of like looking for that real kind of like open uh, source, like vibe, um, I say like check out Glitch and look around and see what the people are making. Even people who aren't developing, I'm always showing yeah. Glitch and um, yeah. I was actually, I was hoping I can show uh, yeah, the stream. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> I, I, dropped, I dropped a link to the product hunt. There was, uh, I, I, know, I got this uh, last week uh, in my email. Uh, so there's a new editor that's out. So yeah, I'd love to see the new editor. And, and yeah, maybe just kind of walk us through like uh, as much as you'd like to about Glitch. And we can just kind of take a peek at what's, what's going on in that. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. I'm muted. And we're hoping to also for anyone watching and, and checking out to look at their, um, I'm, I'm going to forget the name now, Glitch and Bio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, well. I'll, I'll show that off too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. So uh, here I am on the uh, Discover page on Glitch. Um, we, okay. again, you don't ever have to start from scratch from like a blank page. Um, we have a bunch of starters that you can uh, start from. So you can make big websites, uh, Node app, we have an 11T starter, React starter, SQLite. Um, but you can okay. also import um, your projects from uh, GitHub. Uh, okay. And uh, oh, I should also give a, a shout out to uh, glitch.new. Um, let me open that up in a new tab. Um, Glitch.new is a shortcut we launched um, uh, with a, a partnership with Google, um, okay. who have the .new domain. Um, we, you can create these new apps by just like typing glitch.new slash 11t, and it will okay. remix the app. Um, let me go back here, but I want to show off the other shortcuts. Um, you can type glitch.new in front of a GitHub repo URL to import it directly into oh, Glitch. Nice. Um, so if you're on GitHub and you're like, oh, I want to you know, put this into Glitch and have it auto deploy, um, just type glitch.new in front of it. Um, you can create shortcuts for your own projects. Um, or if you just want kind of like a blank app to get started from, glitch.new slash blank is a really popular uh, shortcut. Um, and okay. this glitch.new itself is a Glitch app and you can view the source of it in the editor. So I just want to give a shout out uh, to glitch.new. Um, so yeah, we you know we we want people to be able to we want to lower the friction for people getting their apps uh, into Glitch, and so we allow you to import that. Um, okay. This section here, I'm super excited about this because again, it's all about like the community and like what they're creating and the inspiration that they provide. And so we did a roundup of um, we asked the community to nominate some of their like favorite apps from uh, last year, um, okay. and there's it just like this shows really the variety and awesomeness of what peop what the community is creating. Um, we have people doing storytelling um, about the um, history of slavery in uh, the US specifically in New York City. Uh, we have people making VTuber um, engine templates. So you can start your own VTuber if you want to have like a digital virtual avatar in your next Twitch stream. Uh, Rich okay. Yee here made one that's Remix on Glitch. We have people demoing really cool stuff that you can do at P5.js, which is a really cool library. Um, and uh, our best design actually was a Glitch in Bio app. So I'll talk about Glitch in oh, Bio cool. in a second. But um, yeah, there's all sorts of like cool, fun stuff, funny things. Someone made a 
generator of like fake UK based foods that went viral. <laughs> um, and the BTS fandom shouts out to them. Um, they track yeah. uh, Spotify streams on a glitch app. And this is like our most shared glitch app on social media was the BTS graphs. Um, and you can learn a bunch of other stuff about the community. Like I was rickrolled by glitch app four times last year. <laughs> um, so I've challenged the community to, to double that. Um, and uh, yeah. yeah. And then we showcase other apps that the community is making. These are uh, playlists that we have here. Um, and yeah. And then that takes us down to uh glitch in bio, which yeah, we launched a new editor last week, um, but like a month or so ago, we launched a glitch app. It's not exactly starting your next like work-based app, but we wanted to kind of help people who are creating a link in bio app um, create okay. something that's more open, customizable, and not kind of like behind a paywall. Um, again, we're trying to like lower the barriers for building the web and not trying to necessarily like centralize that. And so we launched a glitch app called Glitch in Bio. And for those of you who are not familiar with what Link in Bio apps are, there are a lot of social platforms like TikTok and Instagram um, and, and Twitter too that... Um, uh, limit how many links you can have in your bio um, or they okay. limit links. They don't allow you to put links in your individual posts, like on like Instagram and stuff. And it's for spam prevention. And so often over the past years, you'll see someone post like, here's like a cool hat I got, like link to it in bio, link in bio. Okay. And then you go to their bio and they post that link. And that created this like advent of services that let you create simple web pages that are just a list of links. And I'm like, we can teach people to build that on their own. Um, yeah. If, you know, if they want to explore it, if they want to. And so Glitch in Bio is that. Um, okay. So, yeah. And that's that's it here. And, you know, we have, like, um, a settings file for you to update, to update your links. Um, you can make your own themes. Um, go to glitch.com slash glitch in bio to learn more about it. Um, and we also feature some really cool remixes from the community because uh, since we've launched it, people have been customizing and personalizing it. And that's where it gets like really creative okay. and fun. And they're adding all sorts of, um, you know, extensions to it. So we're really excited about it. And we're going to have more stuff coming out about it. Um, but I figured maybe today we can do a remix and show what's, under yeah. the hood of glitch and bio also with like the new editor so yeah 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 no for sure and if folks in the chat have um any questions or um ideas or whatever just like throw in the chat that's what when i'm looking here i'm looking at my like second monitor to see what's yeah yeah there. and that's same here oh, yeah. i'm not i'm not ignoring you i'm i'm i've been tweeting <laughs> out a couple things in uh um but i was gonna say uh, one idea i had uh, maybe somebody's already done this but uh you could create a browser extension to prepend the 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 glitch URL to the URL of a GitHub repository, and you could inject a button to say like you know open on glitch or something. So if that doesn't exist yet, I'd say go somebody go do that. Yeah, know. yeah. Um, I love making like bookmarklets and uh, stuff like that. I have actually a few in my in my browser tab here that take me to like the editor of a glitch app and stuff like that. Um, we have, and that's another okay. cool thing from the community is they're always creating and uh, sharing ways to like edit their workflow experience with glitch. Um, I, okay. I, I, I call it fan art cause it's just like, it's just like cool, cool to see. And, uh, and it really just, it's a really good labor. It's, it's a cool labor love that our creators are making. Cause uh, I know that, web IDEs, there's less customization that's offered to you than you would have in a desktop app. Um, yeah. Just because the browser can only do so much. And also, again, we're trying to lower the barrier and like uh, having to customize your tools and, and, and all that can become a, a barrier. And so um, if you want it enough, um, people will create the tooling to do that. Um, and we also have a really awesome support forum at support.glitch.com where people share the apps they're making and also the customizations. And a lot of the okay. product updates that we make, um, most if not all of them, come from the community. Um, Glitch really is like a community-driven uh, labor of love. So um, okay. yeah. 
So I'm going to start by uh, clicking this little Remix Glitch in Bio uh, link. And it's going to take me into the um, editor. And it's going to uh, create, within seconds, my own copy. Okay. Um, best Diligent Zinnia is the uh, <laughs> URL. Um, so, OK, so this is the new glitch editor. Um, we have a yeah. new kind of context menu to give you tips on uh, how to like update. Um, here it says, this is your own link in bio. Start by adding your links in uh, settings.json. Um, okay. And after it all built, here it is, it's live. Um, and I can uh, nice. open a new window and there's my glitch in bio, it's, it's ready. Um, and yeah, we have some icons. You might recognize this little guy here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we love them too. Um, and uh, yeah, now it's like, okay, let's actually make this our own. So we have a readme here that kind of uh, gives you some steps on what to do. We got step one out of the way, which is remix this app. Um, then yeah. it's edit settings. Um, we have some themes that are built in, but you create okay. them. You can play around with the CSS. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a whole bunch of other tips and tricks, like going to our help center for more documentation. We have lots of docs in this. Okay. Shouts out to support uh, engineer manager Tasha um, and to Sue for building and writing the docs and stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you go to settings.json, this is where all the 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 stuff lives. Um, okay. And so uh, here we have like a links object, and this is where we can. Uh, edit stuff. Uh, we have the name here. So let's see. I'm going to rename Glitch in Bio to Gen in Bio. But I'm going to spell it correctly, um, <laughs> capitalize correctly. And instantly, as you make edits in the code, we auto deploy yeah. those changes. And so here, this is like live. This is a live site. Um, there yeah, it is, Gen in Bio. Fast. Yeah. And you can update your links. Um, the text, um, we have a cool new color picker. This is part of the new editor launch I'm super excited about. Um, nice. And uh, yeah, and then down here we have the social buttons. Um, so here we have, we, we're we we're on Dev2 Glitch. Um, I am yeah, too, I personally, uh, Jen Schiffer. Um, and yeah, that will be more active this year. Um, our, <laughs> our LinkedIn still, links to Fog Creek software. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, and we have all of our social here. Um, we have, uh, you know, we in the support forum, we have had people from the community requesting uh, more icons, um, more social icons, and you can add them yourself. You can upload the icons into okay. assets, um, or you can uh, suggest it to us, and we'll add it in versions of this. We keep um, updating Glitch and Bio um, as. Uh, either packages change or requests are coming in. So we've gotten a lot of feedback from the community and suggestions, and that is in this current version um, okay. of the app, 0.0.2. Um, Here's the package mm -hmm. JSON. You can see the guts of what it's all like built with. So we're using mm -hmm. Vite to build the site, okay. and uh, you'll see handlebars, mm -hmm. and we can take a look at the layouts and stuff. Um, okay. Here's where the links happen. It's a handlebars uh, loop through each of those setting dot links in that JSON file. Um, yeah. And if you're not familiar with handlebars, it's a templating language, so you can inject JavaScripty fun stuff within HTML. And so this is where it's all happening. Um, and you can play around with it, move things around. Again, you have access to all of the files that are built with this app. It is just a node app that lives on Glitch that we created for you to remix. Um, okay. And we have different themes that you can choose from. So um, let's see here. Um, I can show you uh, my actual uh, Glitch in bio, uh, okay. which is, uh, let's see. This is my, this is my Glitch in bio <laughs> that I made. And I can show you the editor view of it. Um, it's a generated static site. There's different kinds of apps that we have on Glitch. Um, you can have a static site, so no server-side files. You can have a full-stack app. Um, mm -hmm. 
but if you wanted to, if you aren't a Glitch Pro subscriber, they do fall asleep after five minutes of inactivity, and then they wake up whenever someone goes to it again. But if you're a Glitch okay. Pro subscriber, you can um, keep uh, a number of apps awake. And then we have generated static sites, which are static sites at the end, but there is a build process that requires a server. And so we introduced this so that people can create generated static sites and have the static okay. sites stay awake all the time. It's just the container of the editor that like falls asleep. and glitch Glitch in Bio is a generated static app. And if you want to know if your app on Glitch is a generated static uh, site, go to the package JSON and look for the Glitch property, and you'll see okay. the project types is generated static. Um, and our help docs will show you how to turn your site into a generated static site, and it's essentially adding this. Um, okay. This is my Glitch in Bio. So this is what my settings look like. I have my own links. And I have a theme that I created called Live, Laugh, Love. Um, okay. And uh, I created just a style sheet called Live, Laugh, Love um, that okay. has my custom um, font that I'm using, my colors. I got this like kind of pink lemonade sunset vibe uh, last year. I have to come up with what gradient is my vibe this year. Um, <laughs> and just some kind of like custom style. Like I added like this like box shadow kind of thing um, and okay. the gradient background and my custom avatar. Uh, so there's, there's a lot that uh, you can do there. And um, if we go back to Glitch in Bio, um, the landing page on the bottom, we have some featured Glitch and Bio remixes. Um, this is a playlist. You can collect and bookmark apps on Glitch and create playlists of them. Okay. Um, and these are some of the really interesting remixes that were made um, early on of Glitch and Bio. So Andy Piper, okay. who works at Twitter, um, contributed a bunch of like updates and like icons and stuff that went into the latest version. Um, okay. And uh, Kevin here made an app that adds a um, section that will show if you're live on Twitch. So you can he's okay. connecting it to the Twitch API to show like live. Um, and that's like a really cool thing to add. If someone's looking at your info and you happen to be live, it's a great kind of way to get them to engage where you are live and existing. Um, yeah. And we have some really like beautiful looking stuff. And actually I wanna show, um, Alex links here was in the last year in glitch uh, roundup one best okay. design. Um, let me uh, visit That's a that. Great background. How beautiful! He's just an excellent artist um, and also created this font. Um, and okay. look at the little animations. <laughs> the little bird moving. Um, has a portfolio um, and does a lot of like really awesome stuff. It's really um, nice. Yeah, and that and this is again, this is re what's really exciting about working on um, a community-driven uh, like web ID is getting to see that like we put out this thing and we knew our community was just gonna like blow our minds with what they created and like they like over delivered on that promise because some of this stuff is just so great and these are made like within like a day of us like putting it out basically. Okay. Um, so yeah. That's, you know, we got like glitch about here. And again, just like I mentioned before, you know, if you break something, you can like rewind it. And and the editor gives you all sorts of different tools. Like you can see the status um, of the app because um, okay. we do limit disk space and like memory and CPU usage. I am a, a Glitch Pro subscriber, so I, I get okay. unlimited uh, requests per hour and some extra disk space. Um, we do show you the logs um, okay. for your app. So you, if the site, if you're remixing, I always open logs first just to see like what's happening behind the scenes. Um, so uh, yeah, you'll see all that. So like it's, this is showing that it's a Vite server running it locally. Um, you get okay. a terminal. Some people are like, oh, I nice. want to run commands. So yeah, you know, get every project is a Git repo and we have rewind, but maybe you want to make your own commits. Um, rewind does checkpoints every several minutes, but maybe you want to do your own commits or you want to like upstream to, you know, a GitHub repo and do it separately from mm -hmm. our exporting. Um, or you want to just navigate or create files within the terminal. Uh, 
on your own instead of adding files here. There's a number of reasons why you would want a terminal. Um, yeah. This makes sense, um, and it really shows how powerful the editor is. So we have uh, the terminal there. Um, and we have a number of tools. Again, we don't lock you into the platform, so um, I'm going to have to change. This is an old app, so I can change that. Okay. Um, but uh, we let you import, export. We let you do custom domains. Uh, and then this is for the preview window, so you can close that if you don't want to be distracted by it. Um, or I just open up in a new window. Uh, okay. Yeah, and I can close this out because I already know. Um, and then searching within files. Um, and then what is, again, I love collaborating with people, um, especially with the, the community when they ask for help and stuff like that. Um, so you can share your project. It's basically like Google Docs for code. Um, yeah. If I want to, if a Glitch Pro subscribers can make their projects fully private or they make okay. the code private and people can still see the app. And then you can invite uh, members to join the project and be able to collaborate with you. Um, so just like Google Docs. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, access control um, is a really powerful thing that we had also upgraded uh, last year. So really kind of exciting stuff. Um, going on in yeah. there uh yeah so and then we have like your keyboard shortcuts um and then uh we have the help center uh here uh that have all of our frequently asked questions and all of our just like really awesome um help docs like it's really okay. um it's it, it docs are hard um yes we're good yes. we're good at <laughs> Uh, like we put a lot of work uh, into them, um, and they're uh, yeah. I love I love this uh, page, I love the site, and also when our users. I think it being a very uh, really cool part about working community is not just having community feedback driving the the product, but also having community feedback drive the docs. And so um, our support folks, um, our support manager is really awesome at being receptive to that. Um, okay. And we have a really again vibrant um, community forum um, where people are helping out each other. It's discourse. Um, okay. So it's a forum that we, we don't have like an official discord or anything like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just go like, okay. we have people sharing stuff, um, all the time in like the gallery. Oh, this is a really cool one. Someone made this tarot card deck. Um, and I think like you can remix this to like make your own card deck, uh, okay. kind of app. And it's just like a drag and drop thing. Um, and you can like expose and rotate the cards and stuff. And they were just kind of like trying to get back into like JavaScript, um, which is kind of what the start of make 8 art.com was. So uh, that's like tarot cards.glitch.me is a really um, cool thing that I uh, saw yesterday in the forum. So shouts out yeah. to them. Uh, yeah. I'm also so. glad we didn't see the death card. So that's a good sign. Uh, yeah. Good. <laughs> yes. I was like, I, I don't know much about tarot, but this looks really cool. And also, you know, I it, it, the again the aesthetic of it is really cool, and and I think that it shows our community is so creative, and their aesthetic is like really cool. Um, yeah, there's kind of you know in fashion and beauty, the the trend right now is um, a recycling of like Y two K. Um, clothing mm -hmm. aesthetic and I think the web also is following fashion in that sense so seeing very like Y2K vibes yeah. especially as people are starting to focus like on the metaverse and and I think when people think of like new buzzwords in tech the you think of stock photos about those buzzwords mm -hmm. and like anything about virtual stuff is like that Y2K like vibe, which yeah. I'm so excited about because I love uh, that aesthetic. Um, again, it's very like unpretentious and like futuristic and yeah, it existed many years ago, but that was when yeah. I was learning how to build websites and that was like with GeoCities. I'm curious, what, what tools did y'all first use when like you made your first website? Yeah. 
Well, Notepad, like I was saying, but then like uh, GeoCities for sure. Uh, my local ISP at the time, like when I still had like a 14K baud modem, like you had your own personal page on the ISP site, uh, the internet service provider. So, uh, but it was, it was kind of clunky that because like, you know, a lot of people had counters in those days, you know, like come visit my page and you keep refreshing it so your counter goes Guess up. Bumps. <laughs> yeah 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 web rings all that stuff uh and so it's like yeah I, I i definitely agree there's like that fun aspect of like bring back like it wasn't tacky it's it's like you said like that y2k-ish vibe of just make it fun and collaborate and don't take yourself so seriously like i should i should probably put an under construction page on my website or something <laughs> or the or the rotating <laughs> email emoji <laughs> This site looks best on Netscape Navigator on a 1024 yeah, yeah. by 768 screen. Like that kind yeah, of, I yeah, love yeah. that stuff. And again, it's like, it's so pure and unpretentious. I keep using that word, but I think it's so important. And um, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. authentic, authentic is also a big word, uh, a word I use a lot, especially in my working community, but just like with like yeah. expressing yourself on the web. Um, and I just think that that's uh, really cool. Um, and yeah. I'm interested to see what like the next phase of like uh, web aesthetic is going to look like. It will probably be like 3D stuff, of course. But uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, that's the coolest thing about my job is I get to just like watch this happen in real time and, and talk to the people that are doing it and like build the tools to help them do it. Like it's like, what? what else is there worth doing <laughs> if you're gonna yeah, yeah. If you're gonna work you know so uh i mean just yeah. like with like the way that forum uh cultivates community and gives it's it's similar in like the the the, the mission to um enable people to express themselves and, and and learn about other technical topics in a friendly space and friendly is also yeah. like a key word because you can't you can't, you can't be in a toxic environment and really be your full self. Um, and that also applies yeah. to writing your best code and putting your best expression out there. Yeah. As far as tools for me, I didn't start coding until I was 28 and CodePen was where I started and exactly that. I'm pretentious, just being able to like go in, have fun. Um, I'm a very visual learner too. I came from like being crafty and stuff. And so for me, it was like being able to go on there and just like have fun and do that stuff and share things and communicate with people and be in yeah. a safe environment where I could share stuff. And they're like, Oh, let me just fork this pin and show you like, you could do something a little bit different here and, and you can learn that way. And that's, that's how I learned them. So I, I love these kind of communities. Yeah, and there's like an overlap amongst all of them. I think it's really in um it's important and exciting to try out lots of different stuff. Um mm -hmm. there's so much to try and I think a lot of people are always learning like what works for them or what mm -hmm. doesn't work, especially since the kind of code we write has changed and is continuing to change. So like tools like need to adapt to that and that's why yeah. the community is so important because that's where you learn what you need to adapt to is like that community and so by um really uh talking to them like face to face like virtually you don't have to be in the same room as them um and uh really kind of like hearing what their pain points are what excites them i think what excites them is as important as like what pains them because yeah. you don't want to remove what excites them. I think a lot of people forget that. Um, and uh, and also when you talk to somebody about their pain points, you want to ask them what excites them because then that puts them in a better mood after that conversation. It's a good closure yeah, yeah. to that. Um, but yeah, that's what's like really, really cool there. And I think working on, uh, you know, building your apps on Glitch also helps you get... Um, direct feedback on stuff you know you, you build something mm -hmm. you share it really quick you get that feedback and you can just go into the editor and just like make make those changes and it's not like a laborious task to respond to feedback i think when software tooling became more sophisticated the feedback loop collapsed um yeah, yeah. and so and i think that's what's made it hard for people who are either revisiting building websites 
um, or who are just getting started um, have issues with they're using a tool and it's not working for them and they think it's them but it's actually the tool but there's no way to really express that productively or quickly and so they yeah. give up um, or you know people are used to the way that they built the web a decade ago which often was like you wrote some code you uploaded something through ftp sftp if you were fancy yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh and you saw you saw it live um and uh you know, now there's a lot of tooling that exists to build more ambitious sites. And it, 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 I think it, some people feel like they have to know all of that in order to get something live. And you'll see from our yeah. glitch starters, like a static site doesn't have any build process. Like if you don't need a build process, try it out without a build process. And then if you find that, yeah. that you need one, then you can add it. Like it, it should be an iterative process. But we don't teach people, I don't think we teach folks who are like self-learning about how important it is to know that it's okay to, and important to iterate. Um, you can iterate and ship quickly. Um, yeah. I think that's key to bringing back that feedback loop that makes you a better developer. It makes you a better communicator. Um, makes you a better community member, um, whether you're a leader in it or not. Um, and that's a, something I want to see, and I think I am starting to see um, a lot more um, because community, the word community with a capital C, um, is becoming more yeah. prevalent in conversations about what goes into the business of software. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it, Christina can definitely speak to this because this is what she'll be doing at her new role too. But but yeah, like it, it seems like there's been an explosion. It's like all of a sudden companies just realized, oh yeah, we need to take care of our communities, you know? It's like, it's like it, there's like a huge explosion of it. But there was something that you said also, like just, you know, people wanting to be creative and, and getting that feedback. I, I think that's one of the things I loved about web development. Even when I was in Notepad long, long time ago, you just refresh a page, even if it was, you know, running locally. At the time, you didn't even have the local server, at least when I started. It was just like the file and I refreshed it in the browser. But just seeing like, hey, I, you know, I put a button here, I put, you know, some silly animated GIF and then I refresh the page and I see it, you know, obviously the tools now auto refresh, but it, it, that's like super satisfying to, to just see like, hey, I built something and it's already there, you know, and like, I, I think that's something that is why web development appeals to a lot of people, you know, because uh, it's just the fast feedback loop like you're saying, so. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this goes back to what I was saying about side projects and stuff that kind of like fall fall yeah, by yeah. the wayside is you have like an aha moment, um, an idea you want to get and you need yeah. that quick, like, um, what's the word? Instant gratification. Instant gratification. Yeah. It's something I require for, for things. <laughs> it's what, what fuels me to keep moving forward. Um, and yeah, that like, I remember like the excitement of dragging a file into my FTP uh, client and then, yeah, clicking refresh and then getting a blank page because I was a PHP developer. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, my first yeah. job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that was like, yeah, like, because building the web, like, I was doing Java before and, you know, I had to click the little, like, you know, uh, build uh, icon, I think, in. Uh, and NetBeans, it was like a little like ladybug that you press to like debug and like run it and stuff like that. Um, and uh, with the web now, we build processes. It seems just as complicated, and uh, it yeah. should be for complicated apps. But most most apps are not so complicated that you need a full suite and DevOps team to get going. And I'm talking about for individual creators, of course, like companies yeah. that are running sites have customers, you want to be responsible and, and protect them. That involves like a large team, but someone who's making, um, who's doing uh, API examples um, yeah. for their community. Um, this is just glitch lets them do that like on their own. It's very, I think it can be very empowering. No, for sure. <clears throat> and kind of ties into what you're saying, like, you know, just build process and stuff, uh, build process and all that stuff. 
you know, you, you've, we've seen like a rise of these meta frameworks. So like, for example, Next.js in React, you know, so like, I don't know, every, every job I've ever been at, I always seem to be the person that works on the webpack portion of things for some reason. And it's, it's not something like I'm searching to do, but it just happens. But, you know, you have something like Next.js or, or even like Vue, you know, where, you know, you've got V running the build. It's just like, it's kind of like batteries included for a lot of things. And it just abstracts away all that complexity of like, okay, yeah, okay, how do I, how am I going to code split this? What am I doing here? It's like, it brings back, it brings back like what you're saying. Like, I just want to build something, you know, and like, you can worry about that for me. I mean, you still have to do deployments and stuff, but uh, yeah, I just, I think it's interesting because there's like so many build tools that have come along, you know, like started off with like just require JS to get stuff embedded into your, into your pages. Then you got stuff like browserify, then we got webpack and then like, and, and all these things inspired other things. So, you know, like V E S build all, all these amazing new tooling and, and things are just getting faster. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's, I don't know. People complain about JavaScript, but I honestly love it. And I, I just love all the new things that are coming in. You know, some people get cranky about language features, but I, I find it exciting that people are being inspired by other languages to bring in stuff that they think could work in, in JavaScript as well and stuff. So like, uh, yeah, it's just, I feel, I feel like it's an amazing time to be a web developer, even though there are some complexities still, but, uh, yeah, and, and again, that's a harp on the importance of community, but, which I'll be doing for the rest of my life, because uh, <laughs> I'm correct. Um, one of the ways to get through that complexity that's not going away with having to deal with language decisions that were made 20 years ago um, and tooling that was created five minutes ago that you have to use is yep. that you have to look for your people that will help you um, through that. Um, and so that's why like, I love you know, the, the communities of the different platforms and like the glitch community because they are so helpful to each other because we're all kind of going, yeah. once you kind of like shed your ego that I think a lot of folks feel like the, the old yeah. culture in, in web development was very much like you had to build up a wall and really kind of come in with the machismo, like a, a know everything attitude. Um, yeah. And now that, things are becoming a little bit more diverse and who's entering the space. Uh, we're seeing yeah. people being more vulnerable about, you know, being confused about stuff and like raising their hand and asking for help and, and, and looking yeah. for collaborative environments to be able to do that. Um, yeah. And that's, that's, yeah, it's why, why it's exciting. Like things are getting more overwhelming with what, how many tools are out there and the paradox of choice yeah. is really strong, but the community aspect is also really strong. That's, that's kind of like the balance that exists. And so when people say, what should I learn? It's like, one, what are the things that like really frustrate you the most? And like, how can you pick something that has a community that will help you get through those so you don't feel alone and you can get over that like hump that like a, yeah. a lot of tooling uh, and languages and even just kind of like concepts and ideas from building uh, have. Um, and I just want to yeah. note that uh, the the new editor that we launched last week, we used yeah. Vite to build it. Um, so okay, you know, cool. yeah. So we you know not not everything on Glitch is a Glitch app. The Glitch editor is not a Glitch <laughs> app. And so we it's basically kind of like dog fooding what we're trying to abstract away. You know, what I mean, we're like, oh, this is like yeah. a pain to do. How do we make sure that like our users don't have to do it? Um, and that's like a cool, yeah. that's why it continues to be like a cool challenge um, because the tech is always uh, yeah. evolving. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm curious, I don't know if you can speak to the tech behind it. Like, so it's built using V. Uh, v isn't just for Vue, like you can build React apps or any kind of apps with V. Uh, so I'm kind of curious how like what's the tech stack that is behind glitch i mean there's containers like you mentioned that's one part of it but if we're talking like from the front end aspect of things like what's what what do we have in there what's going on oh yeah so the so we have a uh, glitch.com and then we have the editor um and yeah v to build react um okay to componentize like uh everything uh 
yeah, that's, you know, it's, it's, I, I'm not going to downplay the complexity um, of it all, but I also don't like to like yeah. overwhelm people. Um, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> the, the market for web IDEs um, is, I, it's saturated, but like saturated is such like a like a bad word when it comes to like market stuff. For me, I'm kind of like, oh no, that's exciting because like competition yeah. breeds innovation, um, and uh, innovation is like what like that trickles down to the people that are using the tools that are being innovated, um, and that's mm -hmm. like really like kind of like an exciting thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that it's there are a lot of web IDEs that exist today compared to several years ago um, because it's a lot easier as everyone's building tools to empower people to build the web. People are building the web and they're building the things that like solve their problems. And a lot of that yeah. are like their own like text editors. I know, I think like, I think there is um, an editor for, um, I think there was, a, I think, Rich Harris, who created Svelte and Rollup, was yeah. making an editor specifically for Svelte apps. Like it's, it's like a okay. fun thing to kind of experiment with because people are doing it so that they can lower the barrier to their users to using like their tool. Um, so we'll see a lot more of those, and it will seem less unique and novel, which is good. Yeah. Um, but um, what, you know, again, what what glitch? What stands? glitch apart from a lot of others again is the community and the creators that are developing uh, on it that's where people are going to they're looking at the apps that they're making yeah. they're remixing them they're interacting yeah. with them um and they're they have a lot of access to us that are working on it to mm -hmm. give feedback and like make change there um and yeah, that's like my goal is to just like keep that energy going um, for the yeah, next yeah. Um, seventy years. Of, of... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm retiring at 140. I'm just announcing here live. Yeah, heard yeah. It first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not 141, 140. We we only do mm -hmm. even numbers on the stream here. So, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. Point the so. the bring back up though is the. Re remixing part. So when we were talking about community and community, you know, <laughs> whether it's a buzzword or not, community is important. And I think for anyone coming in, whether they're new or they've been a developer for a long time, being able to go into these kinds of things like glitch and just being able to remix what someone else is learning and being able to hack on it and, and try something new, especially because we're like, I think Jen said earlier, we're always having to learn <laughs> stuff yeah. as developers. And so being able to see these nice examples of someone else doing something and how you can do it as well. And it's, it's a really powerful tool that, uh, you know, you didn't always have when you were learning to code or learning something new. And now we have these things and shout out to the community at glitch and, and everyone doing that kind of stuff, because it's really, really yeah. awesome to be able to just get up and running with that stuff quickly. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, all the, so, I just like the colors on Glitch. <laughs> just yeah, 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 no, it's, it's, uh, I'm just showing. I'm just showing off some of the the, the new stuff about uh, the editor. You know, we've got um, better inline okay. error reporting. Um, the smart color picker I mentioned. 3D asset support is also a big thing. I think I briefly mentioned the okay. metaverse earlier on, but we have a very large community of build, people building VR and AR apps on Glitch thanks to open source um, tools like 3JS and A-Frame. Um, okay. And their their creators are heavily uh, using Glitch. Um, and so we also launched with the editor um, 3D asset support um, a faster CDN with Fastly. Um, we're really excited about that. And again, these are the things that like we reach out to people and are like, what do you need to like make this easier for you? And they're like, here are these things. And so we're just going through that list. And it's like, let's make things easier um, yeah, because, yeah. yeah, we want to, again, like lower, lower, lessen that friction or remove the friction entirely to like really make some cool stuff. So, um, and yeah. if any of y'all... Um, in the chat are just learning about glitch or you haven't been back to it a while um please go back and and share uh with me or the community what you're creating which you can do on the forum um or you can email me directly jen at glitch.com um okay. and you can find all the info on my glitch in bio so yeah um we we didn't 
go through it because you're already logged in, but I imagine the you can log in like with social uh, accounts like uh, I imagine like your GitHub and Google or or, or yeah, how we do people typically log in. Yeah, we have we have single sign on options for um, GitHub and Google, and then also just like email, uh, magic yeah. link, or password. Um, so a wide variety of ways to sign in there. Um, and then it will take you to uh, your dashboard, which will be a list of all of your apps that you can um, make live or archive, track your project hours. So um, users do have a limited number of hours. It's a lot of hours, though, for how long their apps can be awake for yeah. a month. Most people don't hit their limit. Um, and if you are, for example, DevRel people will have a lot of examples that they want to like keep live. Um, maybe yeah. they're using WebSockets or they're making a bot that always has to be awake. Um, you can subscribe to Glitch Pro um, and have no rate limits on your apps you can keep um five apps like awake all the time um and you get extra project hours and some other uh perks there so um but the things that i showed you remixing glitch in bio and like editing apps and exporting adding custom domain stuff that's all uh free i think the one thing i showed that was only glitch pro is being yeah. able to make your code um or app private um oh yeah so yeah, yeah. yeah. but you can yeah. Add, for free you can add members to your project it's just that would remain open so it's a great okay. free tool for open source development yeah yeah no it definitely looks great and um yeah no this i'm still staring at the aesthetic i, I love the whole aesthetic of uh, of the app and the site Oh, there's a little, 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 little Easter egg. Uh, is that these are all like little, they're like color forms, if any of you all ah. remember color forms. <laughs> oh, that's super cute. I love it. Yeah, we have fun. Awesome. We have fun here uh, on, on Glitch the website. So. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it sounds like you have a great work environment where you're, you're ha you know, you're doing serious work, but having a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, you know, we... We we have a big name, but we're a small company. I think we only need I only need a third hand to count how many people um, are working on this right now. And I want to give a shout out to all of them because they all, everyone that's here has like made uh, my life like just because I you know of working all the time while everything with like the pandemic and and just like just. Everyone's going through personal stuff on top of personal stuff. Um, and the people yeah. that work with me at Glitch um, have just been like a joy to exist around through all of this. Um, and if that weren't the case, I think like the, the group we have, um, that vibe is crucial to our ability to ship fast and ship cool stuff so much mm -hmm. for our community. Um, you know, if you're kind of like rotting from within the outside, you know, people are going to see it. And so people will say yeah. like, oh, it must be like really cool. And they get that sense because of, you know, how cool the tool is. And also because of how, you know, excited I get when I'm talking <laughs> about all of it. Um, yeah. But, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. So, yeah. So shout, shout yeah. out to all of my uh, glitch coworkers. Um yeah, yeah. It, it really can't be understated how important having uh, awesome humans to work with is it, it's so important you know like even if the work's interesting for sure but like I, I don't know for myself people have always been like a huge draw for wherever I work you know uh, even if even if I wasn't super interested in the product you know just working with amazing people on on stuff uh, you know it's awesome um, yeah, when I first started, you know, again, almost five years ago, I just remember telling everyone, like, this feels like cheating. Like, I feel like I found a cheat code <laughs> for how to, like, you know. Um, and, yeah, you know, it's just, like, no no, no job, no company is, like, perfect, and uh, yeah. no product is perfect. But if the people that you are with, if you're all aligned on, like, what the vision is and, like, what they think the culture should be and what is best for our self-preservation as like people working and creating something um that is like the foundation for what kind of community you're able to build and so it is that is really core to how we've been able to not only create but maintain and grow 
what you know i believe are the friendliest community of uh coders um and yeah so yeah. that's you know it's super important and so um i want every every uh company executive to hear that i'm sure they're all here in the chat full of company yeah, yeah, executives yeah. <laughs> Of uh, you know val value your uh your workers value your community and know that they are not completely separate from each other they all are um symbiotic um and if you're working in a way that's uh, otherwise that's not going to be sustainable so yeah. yeah cool cool um i know we're getting close to time um i was wondering if if there was like any not not to sound cheesy, but any parting thoughts, or we might have kind of already done them, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um. So let's see. Parting thoughts. So for um for people who are there are a lot of people right now who are learning to code. It's like New Year's resolution time. There's always a wave of people mm -hmm. that are getting into code. Um, a lot of people that are trying to enter the space because a lot of opportunities were removed and or changed dramatically when the pandemic um, hit globally. So we're seeing a lot of people going into tech. Um, and yeah. my, my words for, for them are to, you know, find look around and find where people that you seem to relate to are talking to each other. Um, you know, go to places like, um, you know, Dev.2, for example, just like find what people yeah. are writing about, what they're talking about. Don't feel like everything you read about is something that you need to know. Do not try to know everything. It's a losing game. It's a losing, heartbreaking game. I go through it myself in, in cycles, mm -hmm. especially as I've gone from being a student to an educator, to an engineer, to a community and a director, like just, you don't have yeah. to know everything. In fact, the, the most intelligent thing to do is to know what you don't know and either yeah. find a way to learn it or surround yourself with people that can help you on your vision and include them. Don't just like steal their work or like take their ideas. Um, yeah, but yeah. like really kind of create a support system um, because it can never be about one person. It's not sustainable. You'll burn out and it's just like not good overall and ask questions, ask questions all the time. And if people tell you, like make you feel bad for asking questions, try to find a way to like not allow those people in your life. Um, know that like yeah. not everyone has to um, like you because that's, not everyone's going to like you. Again, tech can be a very pretentious and like um, artificially competitive um, place to be, um, especially yeah. since social media, while the, the world is in chaos, social media tends to veer and like lean into that. Um, so just be mindful yeah. of that and, and find your support and talk to people and also talk to people who are not developers in tech. There are many different kinds yeah. of people that are involved in making software and you're going to learn so much more by communicating with them. And that's going to make you a better engineer and communicator. And that's how you're going to move up the ranks and find what your place really is in the grander scheme of software development. Yeah. Awesome. So that's We're a lot of parting but... words. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I just got to say, like, I don't, I don't know if anybody will ever be able to outdo those parting words now, but, uh, <laughs> but that, thanks for sharing. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to wrap up. I just want to end on a note with uh, Christina mentioned at the start of the stream, but if you joined us later on, uh, Christina is uh, leaving former last days on Friday, right? Um, and I just want to say a big thanks to her for co-hosting the stream with me for the, the it's not two years yet. It's, we started October, Hacktoberfest 2020, day one, and we've been doing it since then. Um, and just as a coworker, I really appreciate you. So just want to say good luck with your new endeavors and I'll miss working with you. Yes, yeah. so. me too. Um, Thank you. Cool, cool. And last thing, next week, uh, we have uh, Dan Abramov and Maggie Appleton joining us. They're going to be talking about the course they dropped. Uh, I think it was end just of the summer. Or, yeah, just JavaScript.com. So they'll be on mm -hmm. next week. And then uh, 
after that, we've got Sunil Pai from Cloudflare coming on. We're going to be talking about all things Cloudflare the following week. So if you aren't already, give us a follow so you can know when we go live. And thanks again so much, Jen. Uh, really love talking to you today. It was great conversations. Uh, all right. We'll see everybody next week. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks all in the chat for your candor. I'll see y'all on Glitch.com. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool.